This is section 6-3 and we're going to look at graphs of functions and the general function behavior. So we're going to determine intervals of increase and decrease and identify local maximums and minimums. So now suppose f is a function defined on interval i. We say that it's increasing if and only if the if we look at two y values and it's saying that if we're moving along from A to B, meaning that A has to be first and then the next value is B, the next value for B has to be larger when we plug it in than the previous one, meaning the next Y value has to be larger than the next. We say that it's going to be decreasing if this value is going to be larger than this value. Um, meaning that the previous value a is going to be bigger than the next value b. So taking a look at this, if I were to say that this is a and this is b, so what ends up happening is if we're looking at this, well f of a and here's f of b, well clearly f of b is larger than f of a. Whereas if I were to pick this value to be my a and this value to be my b, well here's f of a here is f of b. Well, clearly f of b is a lot smaller, or f of a is a lot bigger than f of b. And so those are going to be ways for us to be able to determine that. And then we can say it's constant on i if and only if f of a equals f of b. And so meaning this would be like an interval in which something is constant because it's not increasing or decreasing on that interval. So let's take a look at the intervals of increasing and decreasing. Now just to kind of point out here, these values here, see how it like, I guess a better good way to like imagine this would be if you're driving and you're going 20 miles an hour, and so you're driving, you're going 20 miles an hour, and then you want to go in reverse. Well for you to do that you have to slow so you're decreasing you stop and then when you reverse you're now increasing again but there has to be a point in between that in which you're increasing or you're decreasing your speed and increasing your speed you have to stop in between and so there's going to be intervals on this graph here like here and here in which increasing 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 stop then it switches into decreasing. Those values are not going to be considered part of our increase or decreased, and so they're considered excluded values. Now in calculus, it makes so much more sense why when you actually start tackling that. But for now, we just can't include them. So the values that are increasing, meaning that if I move to the next level, if you notice, it's getting larger and larger and larger. And so I can say, we just look at the x values, the interval is increasing from negative 4 to negative 2, it's increasing. Also, from 5 to 6, it's increasing. From 5 to 6, it's increasing. And this is interval notation. Now, the intervals of decreasing, it's going to be decreasing from here all the way to here. And so it's going to be decreasing from negative 2 all the way to 3 and I also notice that there's also this interval right here which is also increasing so I can add that and so from negative or sorry, from 3 to 4 it's also increasing so those are the intervals of increasing those are intervals of decreasing and then the only piece that's constant is this piece so the intervals from 4 to 5 are going to remain constant Now if we're going to take a look at a function and we're going to talk about local maximum and minimums. And we say that it's going to be a local maximum at the point a, b if and only if there's an open interval i containing a for which there's a value for f of a being greater than or equal to your f of x for all x's and i's. And so a way to interpret that would be that it's a maximum if we find the value in which it's at the highest, but it can't be the bounds. Because if we use a bound, 
you can't find a value that satisfies this statement here. Okay, uh, And the same thing with the local minimum would be there's a value in which that's the smallest value on the graph, but it can't be what our boundaries are because if, if we use a boundary, then we can't find a value that satisfies this equation, and we call that a local minimum. Now in general, for the entire graph, the highest value for B would be called our maximum, and then uh, the lowest value we call that a minimum. So for example here, if I wanted to find my local maximum, what is the highest value on my graph that's not a bound? Like this is a bound, and this is a bound. And so in this case, the highest value would be here, and so my local maximum would be 4.5, because that is the highest value. My local minimum is going to be this value here, negative 8. You cannot use the bounds because without getting really complicated, it's going to contradict what that definition is, is because I can't pick another value to satisfy. I can't pick another value to satisfy it. And so because of that, there's no way for me to create a comparison to determine if that's my maximum or minimum uh, in terms of it being a local max and min. Now, the maximum in general, what is the highest value overall? That's going to be this value, and so my maximum is the y value of 5.5. And then my minimum, what is the lowest value overall? That's still going to be this value here, which is negative 8. So sometimes the generic maximum or the generic minimum could be the same as the local max or min. That's a possibility, but just know that with a local max and min, you may not use the bounds. So you cannot use the ends of the graph because it contradicts that definition. So now let's just go through and let's just find, um, we're going to kind of basically summarize a lot of the different elements that we went through in this class. So for this graph here, answer the following questions. So find the domain of f. And so my domain is going to be negative 4 and positive 4. Because if I take this and I smush it onto the graph, I'm going to get all the way from here to here. And then find the range of the graph. Well, if I project it onto the graph here, it's going to be from negative 3 all the way to positive 3. And so my range is going to be from negative 3 to positive 3. List the x-intercepts, if any exist. So my x-intercept is here and here. So that's going to be negative 2, 0 and positive 2, 0. And list the y-intercepts, if any exist. And so I have a y-intercept here, and so that's going to be 0, 3. It says find the zeros of f. Well, that's where it crosses the x-axis, and so it crosses the x-axis here. So my zeros are going to be negative 2 and here, which is positive 2. It says solve for f of x being less than 0. So that means where is my graph, where is my y value being less than 0? So if this is where my y is 0 here, the values that are less than 0 are down here. And so it's going to be the interval from negative 4 to negative 2, because all of this is going to be less than 0, and then all of this is going to be less than 0. And so union from 2 all the way to 4. And I can, I can make these brackets because it includes it. Now I don't want to use the bounds because it cannot equal 0, which is why these values did not have brackets. Determine what f of 2 is. So I go to where my 2 is. And so in this case, my y value, that's going to be 0. Solve f of x equals negative 3. So this is saying that if my y value is negative 3, what are my x values? So where is my y negative 3? That's here and here. And so it's going to be negative 4 and positive 4. OK, so for number 9, it says find the number of solutions to f of x equals 1. So it's basically saying my y is 1. And so if this is my y being 1, I would have two solutions. And does f appear to be even, odd, or neither? So yesterday we talked about if there's a reflection like that, that's going to be over the y-axis. We said that it's going to be even. And so my function's going to be even because this could perfectly reflect over the y-axis. 
Now odd, if that those were to switch and then those were to switch, it doesn't, it wouldn't be re uh, a reflection over the, um, yeah, it just wouldn't reflect correctly. So it is not going to be a uh, an odd function. And so it's just gonna be even. It says list the interval in which f is increasing. And so if you notice, it's getting larger and larger, it's going up, it's going up, all the way from here to here. So it's increasing from negative four all the way to zero. And it says list the intervals on which f is decreasing. And so it's gonna be decreasing from zero all the way to four. And so here, because it's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. List the local maximums if any exist. Remember, now we can't use the bounds, so these are excluded when it comes to local max and mins. So the maximum, the highest value is gonna be this one, which is three. Now for the local minimum, none exist because we can't use this one, but how do I know what's too close to that? And so there's no way for me to get super close or say a value that's so close to that negative three on both sides and so there's none there, there's no local maximums and got, just going back to that real quick like I said like if I um, use that definition right there's no value that I can pick that's going to give me close enough to that value and so that's why if I exclude that what value is do I compare it to how do I get close and close and close to that you just can't and that's why there's no local uh, minimum. Uh, find the maximum. So the highest possible value is this one, which is 3. Find the minimum. The lowest possible value is negative 3. And so I can just write negative. In closing of today's lesson, what did we learn today? Well, we talked about maximum and minimums of graph, intervals of increasing and decreasing, and we also included all the previous ways that we were able to discuss or describe a graph. Now in your own words, I want you guys to describe a maximum and a minimum and kind of like what it means, how we can find it, and even if you want to include like how it relates to the definition, that may be helpful. And then also list the multiple ways that we can actually describe a graph. We've learned all these different ways since the very beginning of class, and I want to see what you've learned. So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.